attendees from all over the world are joining as we speak. This is exciting. Really? Yes. Awesome. So before I uh, uh, welcome Nicholas to the, the stage, um, I uh, would just like to welcome you all uh, to this talk titled uh, Tune It Up Joomla Performance Tuning with Nicholas Dionysopoulos. Um, now, before we get started, I have a few reminders and housekeeping items. So first, a big thank you uh, to our gold sponsor, Watchful. And now I'd like to introduce Nicholas. He's a PHP developer from Athens, Greece. He's been uh, publishing Joomla extensions since 2006, and you probably know him as the author of the Akiba Backup Component and Admin Tools. He is happily married to a fellow geek and has a daughter. Uh, they have two pet cats, or the cats have three pet humans, uh, he likes to say. A jury's out on that one. Uh, he came to the free and open source software back in the late 90s for the community and its core ideology of sharing knowledge and code. FOSS has enriched his life. It's provided him with his livelihood and given him some of his closest friends and helped him find his better half and soulmate. So uh, he is trying to give back to the world by sharing his knowledge and the things he learns. And I am sure that we are all eager for the sharing of his knowledge to begin. So without further ado, uh, please take it away, Nicholas. Thank you, Dave. So uh, welcome to this presentation, which is called Joomla Performance Tuning. I'm going to tell you how to supercharge your site. As Dave told you, I'm Nicholas. I'm uh, Greek, I'm geek, and normally I am a backend developer. Um, however, this time I'm going to talk to you about mostly front-end stuff. I'm also a Formula One fan, so I decided to make this uh, presentation a bit uh, car-themed. So, um, without further ado, let's get your Joomla sites ready for pole position. The basic question that everybody that I've talked to about that asked me is, uh, why does it really matter? Why does uh, the performance of my, of my site matter at all? Well, I would like to say that performance comes at the intersection of three very important factors for your site, the user experience, the search engine optimization, and even its carbon footprint. On the user experience front, people avoid slow sites like the plague. Uh, I have two graphs here with the bounce rate versus the load time. And as you can see, every for every extra second that it takes for your page to load, you are losing about four to 5% of the people who would be visiting your site. And then you can see on the other graph, the visited pages versus the load time, that the faster your page loads, the more pages the, the visitor ends up visiting on your site. If your site is slow, they will give up very, very soon. Um, this is something that hasn't escaped the attention of uh, search, engine, uh, search engines and social media sites and everybody else. So this ends up playing a very big role in search engine optimization. For more than a decade, Google is deprioritizing slow sites in search results. This has begun in 2010, and it has only gotten more, more important over the last year. Facebook, for the past five or so years, has been prioritizing links that load faster, which means that if uh, you're sharing a link from a fast-loading site, it is more likely that uh, people will uh, get to see it. And uh, since the beginning of March 2021, Facebook actively warns mobile users if a link is slow to load. And slow here is about three or so seconds. By the way, you don't have to try and copy all those long links. I'm going to give you a link to the presentation with all the information you see here so you can just sit back and enjoy. Um, the other factor where performance matters is the carbon footprint of your site. And this is a very non-obvious thing. Uh, heavy and slow sites do waste energy because 
they run on data centers, uh, which consume electricity to deliver a site, and we consume them on devices which also use electricity to display them. Uh, electricity production has a carbon dioxide footprint, even if it comes from uh, energies or nuclear or everything else, because you need to build the infrastructure, you need to, to get uh, all the stuff in the right place to produce the energy. How much energy is being used? Well, reducing the page size by 300 kilobytes on a, on a site that has about 30,000 daily page views would save about two tons of equivalent carbon dioxide per year, which is half a year for the average US passenger gas guzzler vehicle before the pandemic. There are about seven and a half million Joomla sites out there. And if we assume that we could do an equivalent uh, performance improvement on every single one of them, we could reduce emissions globally to, to the point that it would be equivalent to removing the entire passenger vehicle fleet of Wisconsin. So it's a not insignificant amount of carbon dioxide. Uh, and this is just by having slow sites. And of course, there is something that beyond all of that should matter to you the most. And I will use the words of Ayrton Senna, a Formula One legend. Being second is, the fir is, is to be the first of the ones who lose. You don't want to be one of the losers, even if you are the best of the losers. You want your site to appear like first in search results. You want all the visitors to come to you or, um, or your clients. So how do we achieve a very good performance on our sites? First of all, we need to start with a solid base. You cannot race an old clunker car, no matter what you do, you're not going to, to go very far with it. The first thing you need to take into account is that you need good quality hosting. Without it, you have nothing. Good quality hosting means uh, that it needs to have the, the following features. First of all, a modern PHP version. Newer PHP versions are far faster than the old ones. Uh, PHP 7.4 or 8.0 is uh, more than twice as fast as PHP 7.0. So this is actually a very cheap and efficient way to make your site uh, better performing. Make sure that the server you're using has SSD storage or SAN storage with a very high input-output throughput, otherwise just the very fact that uh, Joomla or any CMS is loading a bunch of files will slow your site down. Um, make sure that you have adequate RAM on your site, on your server, uh, that's serving your site. Otherwise, uh, your server will be hitting the disk more often. Disks, even the fastest SSDs, are at least um, a, an order of magnitude slower than RAM storage. And you also don't want to, to have uh, requests waiting for RAM to become available so they can uh, be processed. Make sure that the server has fast redundant inbound and outbound network connections. Otherwise, your server will be very slow to push the, the page and all the assets to, uh, to, the, to the visitors of the site. And make sure that it is easy, relatively easy, to scale up or down your hosting plan if you figure out that you have the wrong size plan for your site. Uh, if uh, it requires uh, like a, a massive migration that would take down your, your site for a few days, probably this is uh, not a good idea, you know? Um, the next thing is how you actually build your site itself. I've seen that many people are using pre-built templates based on some uh, very heavy template framework that tries to be a CMS onto itself. And this is always going to be slow. It's always going to be adding two or three seconds per page load time. What I recommend is 
build your own bespoke template, which is not as hard as it sounds. I will tell you what is the, the process that I have been using for, for my sites to build a bespoke template. I start with, with wireframes. This is like the concepts where, where things should be placed on a page. Based on those wireframes, we can create a design and then we can implement it as a Joomla template. Do not try to start figuring out what goes on the page of your site and where while you're building the template, your life will suck. Avoid the all-in-one template frameworks, as I said. Start with uh, uh, one of the default Joomla templates, like the Protostar in Joomla 3 or Cassiopeia in Joomla 4. Um, you can use whichever CSS framework you're comfortable with. I prefer a CSS uh, and, uh, sorry, I, I prefer using SCSS with uh, Bootstrap uh, 5 right now for Joomla 4. And previously I was using Bootstrap 3 for my template. Use less or SCSS or something similar to manage the CSS of your site. Don't try to write all those big style sheets by hand. Otherwise, uh, you, will, uh, uh, you will get lost very fast. Use versioning like kit or subversion to track the changes that you're making. And the most important thing in this process is to uh, make up your mind how you're going to build a template. You can either do outside in, like I'm doing the, the basic uh, framework of uh, the entire site, all the Chrome around the the page, etc., and then start going into the details of each component individually, or you can do it the other way around. You can start uh, by doing some of the inner pages that are more complicated and will require a lot of your of your time and concentration. So you uh, front load all this hard work, and then you start building the easier pages that are uh, uh, the first ones that your visitors will see just so that by the end of the project, you don't find yourself staring at a mountain of work. Um, building your site, one of the very common mistakes that we see, and all of us have done at least in the past, is overdoing it with extensions and try to, to install like uh, 80 different uh, components and 150 different plugins and 200 different modules. Uh, please don't don't do that. You don't really have to do that anymore. You can use the Joomla core features. Uh, since Joomla 3.7, you have all the tools you need to do really complicated sites. Believe me, I, I, I've been working next to my wife who's building very complicated sites using the core, so I see what's possible. You can use custom fields alternate layouts in com content and template overrides to build pretty much everything you need. You should only resort to third party extensions only when using the core is either extremely hard or outright impossible. Uh, for example, you can have an e-commerce site using just the core uh, unless it's something extremely trivial that you can implement with, I don't know, PayPal buttons. Uh, remember that every third-party extension that you install will not only affect the performance of your site, but will also require maintenance and eventually will need to be replaced because uh, a new PHP version came out or a new Joomla version came out and the extension developer just figured out that uh, it wasn't worth the trouble or he can't uh, sustain the, the workload and deliver a new version on time. Regarding modules, try to use them sparingly or not at all, if possible. They are far less relevant than you think, and they do slow down your site. Nobody wants to end up on a page that has so much content that would make the, the grocery store uh, offers catalogs that they print each week look like light content. I mean, I've seen sites that have so many modules, so much content, that I don't know what's going on on the page. I leave that site. 
I just can't parse what I'm seeing. Try to use modules only if they are absolutely necessary to provide useful information for your users according to user research, not according to what you or your customer think, and make sure that they are th their performance is good. For example, if you try to use the latest articles uh, module in Joomla, it runs a very heavy query. Unless there is an absolutely good reason for the user that needs information, you're just losing half a second there. So this is something that you need to take into account when building the site. And let's go to some more essential tune-up of, of, of your site. After you have done all the basics, um, how do you make it perform even better? Nimble wins the race. You can see that all race cars are not these big, fat, heavy vehicles. They are very low, very lightweight, very streamlined. The same applies to your sites as well. Try to use casing, ideally progressive casing, without using file cast, but using Redis or memcast D if possible. Remember that file cast will only make sense if you're on a, on a server with super fast storage like SSD or, uh, or Sun with a high IO throughput that we covered before. Redis and memcast D use the memory of the server to cast things. Progressive casting is better than uh, uh, the regular casting that Joomla provides because it can cast individual components and, and modules. Enable the gzip page compression in the global configuration. This is literally just a, a switch. It uh, reduces the, the weight, the, the, the bytes that are transferred over, over the wired, and it doesn't really take all that much CPU time. So the performance gain, gain you have is very positive. All the static media files should be compressed and cast using .ht access uh, rules, rules in your .ht access files. Um, when you uh, the very end, I have a link to a series of blog posts that I wrote, which have all of, uh, of these directives that you need to put in your .ht access. Remember that compressing static media files on your server is extremely fast because all uh, server-grade processors that have been around the past, I don't know, 15 years have uh, built-in commands to handle this type of compression. So it's, it's super efficient. It's even more efficient than trying to use PHP. So if you think about using a plugin to compress your CSS and JavaScript, don't. I will make a very good point about using HTTPS on your site everywhere. It's not just about the security and privacy of your visitors, but it's also about your site's performance. Having HTTPS enabled and enforced using HSTS rules means that your server can now use HTTP2. HTTP2 is an upgrade to the HTTP protocol, which allows for a feature called server push. Server push means that when you're sending the HTML of your page, you're also telling the server, hey, I've noticed that you're downloading the HTML content of this page. This page also needs these static resources. Do you want me to send them to you? If the browser says, yes, please, then using the very same connection without having to do anything else, the web server will just push all the basic static content, which is typically JavaScript and CSS files that the server will need while parsing the head and the top of the page. So as the, as the browser is uh, still trying to, to process everything, it has already started parsing the CSS and JavaScript of your page, and this can save off like a second to a second and a half on the average site. On Joomla 3, there is a third-party plugin which implements server push. It's by Michael Risi. Uh, 
I hope I'm pronouncing his name right because I have no idea. Um, on uh, Joomla 4, it's actually built into Joomla, but it has to be used by the developer. So on Joomla 4, you can uh, you, you have to ask the developer of the extension to do it, or you will need to put some of the static resources yourself in your bespoke template. Downsizing will also win races. Smaller is better, especially when it comes to images and sites, right? Um, try to optimize most of your images using a tool called, called Image Optim, which uses uh, about a dozen different tools from PNZ Cross to what have you to try and figure out how to create the smallest file possible without losing any quality of the image. This can reduce the image size by 30 to 60% on most images that I've tried. Also, it doesn't make sense to serve a massive image on every single request. For example, when you have a mobile device, a cheap Android phone with a small screen, it doesn't make sense to push the, the same size image that would feed a 27-inch 5K monitor. Um, you need to, to send the correct resolution image depending on who is consuming this content. Luckily, browsers do support that. There is um, a picture element, and uh, inside you can, uh, you can have multiple alternative sources depending on the resolution of the device and depending on um, uh, on the, okay, so both are called resolution. So pixel density and the how many pixels by many pixels is the window. So this uh, will let the browser decide which size image it wants. How do you generate those images? Automatically you can either use an extension like XT Adaptive Images, which I have used in the past, or you can use a template layout helper that you will see in my, uh, in my blog series, which I link to the end of the presentation. If you have a lot of illustrations, illustrations, you know, not photos like line art, uh, stuff like that, it doesn't make sense to, to use uh, JPEG, or PNC, or this kind of bitmap of files. It makes sense to use SVGs. Support for SVGs in Joomla is not very good at the moment. Joomla 3 doesn't actually support uploading SVGs, so you would have to upload them externally. You cannot select them with the image speaker. This has been somewhat fixed in Joomla 4. If you make uh, changes in the media manager settings, um, so, yeah, uh, Joomla 4 will be your best bet to be using SVGs on your sites, but SVGs, SVG files are basically XML, which is text, which can be compressed really good, and it will be a fraction of the size of a, of a bitmap file. If you want to do rollover effects, which I would recommend against unless you have a good reason to uh, because they are distracting and not very accessible if you really want to do that use css effects instead of using multiple images this is not the early o's anymore we don't have we don't we don't need to have separate images for rollover effects on buttons okay even if you're trying to do an effect on a bitmap image there are CSS effects that you can apply that will achieve pretty much the same result. And they are rendered client-side using the device's GPU. In, uh, in racing, you don't go racing using the same fuel that you use on your streetcar. You use uh, a, different, uh, a different fuel, a different mix that's more powerful. This somewhat applies to sites as well. You need to use the right mix of for CSS and JavaScript. Um, 
What I'm about to say only really applies to Joomla 3 because Joomla 4 has a far more efficient static media management, which uh, tries to, to load everything deferred if it can. So this performs better. But on Joomla 3, you will need to use a third party plugin to combine multiple CSS and JavaScript files into one. Usually, you can't just combine everything into one file because A, it will be very big, B, it will cause conflicts, and C, not all your pages use the same mix of CSS and JavaScript files. But uh, using a plugin to combine CSS and JavaScript, you will probably end up with uh, like 20 different files that uh, only load two or three per page instead of having 50 different files load on every page. Um, make sure that you pay attention to the order the files are loaded, and make sure that when you're combining them, you do not change that order. Otherwise, things will break on your site. If you're not entirely sure, use a development copy of your site to experiment and test every single different type of page that you have to make sure that there are no uh, JavaScript and CSS issues. Do note that fonts cannot be, be combined. Fonts are standalone files. You can, however, use a, uh, a CSS uh, trick. You can uh, set font display to swap to make them non-blocking. Font display swap means that the browser will do its best to display the font using a substitution, which is not really ideal for icon fonts, but whatever. And when it has the real font, it will swap out the, 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 the displayed glyphs. This, if, you, if you're using like two or three different uh, Google fonts for your, uh, for your body text, for your headers, for your logo, um, it means that your site will render really fast using whatever is on the uh, client's device. And when the fonts finally download after a couple of seconds, they will just see a small screen flash and uh, the correct font will be used. Speaking of how fast files download, you may want to also consider supercharging your delivery using content delivery networks. If you can budget for it, you should use a CDN. Um, there are even CDNs that are basically free of charge. Cloudflare has a free tier that can, uh, at the very least, make sure that uh, uh, the files of your of your site are um, being delivered by edge nodes, which are closer to to your user, instead of your server, which might be half the world away. Um, most CDNs also have tools which make images responsive or can combine JavaScript and CSS. But usually, these are more expensive tiers. So you might want to consider just using a Joomla plugin there. It depends on your budget. So in most cases, you if if you can do it on your CDN, do it on your CDN. In uh, For most CDNs, you don't even have to use a, a plugin to implement them. It's something that happens at the DNS level. Uh, do your homework, see the different options there is, uh, there are, uh, see how, uh, how they fit your budget and needs and decide. And now let's move on to some site building calisthenics, which are totally optional, but they can give you that small extra advantage. And before I tell you what we can do, I will tell you all the ridiculous things that I would personally never do on a site. So uh, let's be serious. There are some things that people do to gain a few milliseconds advantage that don't make sense. I have seen templates doing string concatenation instead of having readable and manageable template overrides to save on white space. Uh, yes, you can do that, but it's a maintenance nightmare. These are write once templates. You want to change anything, it will be hard. Um, many people try to use minimal CSS frameworks that uh, 
are much lighter than bootstrap and stuff. But then you will need to basically write template overrides for every single view of every single component, core or third party that you're using on your site. And if they have JavaScript, which depends on uh, the CSS classes that most of them do, you will also need to rewrite that. And if they were uh, depending on, uh, on Bootstrap or a different framework that they are using to display their front end, you will also need to rewrite the CSS. So basically, you're creating a complete site from scratch. And if this is what you're doing, why are you using Joomla? Why are you not just using Laravel and build everything from, uh, from scratch? So to me, this makes no sense. Uh, I've seen other plugins which remove jQuery completely without uh, uh, taking into consideration if anything else is using it. Don't use such a plugin unless you're absolutely 100% certain that nothing on your site is using jQuery. And trust me, with Joomla 3, you cannot say that. With Joomla 4, it might be possible in a few years. And finally, people try to make progressive web applications out of Joomla sites. If it makes sense, if you have a business use case, do it. If you don't, don't, don't try. It's a lot of work for minimal gains. Um, I, I can tell you that I have created sites which act like mobile applications and they're not progressive web applications because their useful features require the user to be online. So what's the point of having a progressive web application if they have to be online, right? So um, next thing I want to talk about, and I apologize for uh, the very stereotypical image. I couldn't find one with a male model in a car show for some odd reason that I don't understand. Anyway, um, it's to entice your audience. You share links on social media. So what people see, they see a very generic card that's not really very helpful for them to understand if they want to visit your site. So instead of doing that, try to present them with, uh, with open graph tags and Twitter cards. Basically, you can uh, add some, uh, uh, some microdata in your site's HTML to tell the social media sites to please display an image when displaying the link. And this image can even be auto-generated and include the title of the page or article that you're sharing. Uh, me and my wife, we wrote together such an extension. It's called Lucid Fox Social Magic. It is not an Akiba extension. It's under her own brand, which does exactly that. Um, and the other thing that you might need to do is to make sure to update your, your site's uh, icons, the, the favicons. Um, because remember that when, uh, when people share uh, your links on uh, some sites and when they bookmark something, this is what they will see, your favicon. Make sure you have, uh, you have created favicons with all the different sizes. And now let's go to some uh, finishing details to make your uh, site faster and easier to use. There are uh, things you know, that you can do in your bespoke template, like DNS prefets and pre-connect and resource preloading, which are hints to the browser to tell it, hey, you will need to, to get this file when you download this page, so make sure that you're set up for it. Uh, pre-connect is very useful if uh, your, site, your site's JavaScript is going to be using a third-party API so you can tell the browser, open a connection to that uh, third party server because you're gonna need it in a few. This means that while the browser is still parsing your site, it starts doing the, the whole uh, uh, HTTPS uh, and TCP handshake with a third party server. And um, uh, basically that's it. You're, you're, you're telling the browser to start doing things before it needs to do it. Try to remove any kind of analytics and third-party cookies that you have on your site, which means that you will no longer need to use cookie banners. Cookie banners in and by themselves are very bad for performance. If 
first. They need to load the Krapton of JavaScript. They take a long time to run, and they completely obliterate the the the, the, the time uh, the uh, the the time for uh, the page to load uh, to finish loading. Uh, they also make a massive change on the on the site after it has rendered. So browsers will complain that the large, largest content full paint happened like eight seconds after the, they started loading the page. If you can and have the time, try to implement a dark mode on your site because this will help a lot of people access your site. I have uh, presented on dark mode another time and I said that in some cases it is an accessibility uh, setting. Um, and finally, if you have a compelling use case, like if you're running a new site, you can use accelerated mobile page pages, AMP, which is a different way for people to find you on Google and pretty much nowhere else. But this integrates very nicely with, with Android, with uh, uh, all the Android assistant and stuff. So if you have a compelling use case, do it. It will, it will help users come to your site and by definition, it's super fast. It's just uh, a lot more work to, to set it up because you also need to make a, another template with their kind of HTML, but not exactly HTML language. Um, finally, another thing that's important for the performance of your site is content quality. Try not to supersize your content. Keep your pages reasonably sized. This is not just for the benefit of your users who will have a big problem trying to, to read a 10,000 word, word page, but also it's for the benefit of, uh, of search engines. Uh, keep the DOM size relatively small. Don't have way too many nested tags, uh, which means basically try not to paste directly from Word, Google Docs, and everything else. Uh, if you really need to do that, use JC so it cleans up the content a little bit. If you have really, really, really long articles, try to break them down into a series or at least multiple pages so it's more manageable for both the, the browser and the user. And whenever you have long content, use IDs and headings to make sure they're easier to link to them with anchors. Uh, ideally, you can uh, make its, its heading also link so people can right, right click, copy link, and the browser will, will copy it with the anchor. This helps people uh, paste the link to other people and tell them, hey, this is the, the point in the article that you need to read. Remember that the content of your site is what your visitors see. Optimize the content for your visitors, not just search engines, but also for search engines. This is actually easier than it sounds. Uh, write your content for humans to understand, not bots, so no keyword stuffing, no fluffing. You know, when you have uh, like content that should be a paragraph long and you end up with 50 paragraphs, with just fluff in there because people get bored of that and they will never come back to your site. Uh, make sure you do spell and grammar check. If your content looks like it was uh, it was written by by a kid, they will not come back to your site because how can they trust someone who can't write right? Um, minimize all the different disruptions uh, that can be present in your page, like. Advertisements, videos, popovers, uh, popunders, overlays, animations, all the stuff that distract the, 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 the person visiting the site from actually consuming the content. And I understand that you may want to have ads, you may want to have a newsletter, that's cool, but keep it tidy. Like have one ad per page, don't overdo it, don't have autoplay video, don't have things popping in the face of, of, of a person. I mean, if I want to, to, to subscribe to your newsletter, I will. If you ask me,
before I read your content, I will say no and just go away and go to a different site. Um, use micro data and semantic tags. Joomla already helps you with that. This also helps search engines understand what your content is about. And when you have external links that you do not endorse, use rel equals nofollow. Remember that it's rel equals nofollow and just that. I've seen people trying to stuff other uh, relationships into the attribute, don't, because then it doesn't work and it's like you didn't put it in there. So much for that great presentation, Nicholas. I, for one, learned a lot and I uh, can see many comments uh, saying the same, that uh, this was very helpful and informative on performance optimization. And we did have a couple of great questions. We have about three minutes left for questions. So um, I have one here from Andrew. Uh, what is the best or most accurate way to assess site speed? Page speed, Insights gives different results to Lighthouse. What are your thoughts? Uh, use Lighthouse. This is what Google ends, ends up using internally. And uh, make sure that you're running it from the location that your visitors are going to be using. If I'm building a site for a client in the US and I'm in Europe, I won't be running a lighthouse on my browser because what I experience will not be what my client experiences. Absolutely. And if I could piggyback on that um, for myself, uh, how important is it to have uh, perfect ratings on, uh, on lighthouse? Uh, so 100% for across all the measurement categories. If you count, that's great. It's like mm -hmm. trim site. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, if you, th these are really hard to achieve on uh, on certain sites. I would say, as a rule of thumb, if you're in the 90s, your site is just fine. Um, mm -hmm. Also, try to understand what Lighthouse is measuring. So, for example, if you get a really bad score because you have excessive do excessive dome size but you have excessive DOM size because you're, you're using an automatic translation software because your clients are immigrants who might not be speaking English, maintaining the automatic translation is far more important for you than achieving a perfect Lighthouse score. So always try to understand what are the metrics. Don't just blindly aim for top metrics, aim to please the people who are going to be using the site. Absolutely, great point. And uh, I have another question here. There's a component that provides analytics. Uh, would it be sensible to replace Google Analytics uh, in order for, for better performance optimization? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, also check what kind of information it stores. If it, uh, if it stores information that cannot be considered uh, personally identifiable, like it doesn't uh, store the full IP, it doesn't uh, store a pseudonymous identifier that can be used to identify the, the user back to a real email address or IP address or physical address or name, then you will not need to have cookie banners. So this is not just uh, that you gain performance by removing Google Analytics, you gain performance by also removing the, the very annoying cookie banner. Absolutely. Uh, and I have a, a question here. How do we migrate a slow, large site full of images to a CDN? Is it simple or is there a lot of prep work to do that? So uh, if you're using something like Cloudflare CDN, all you have to do is uh, do a very little bit of prep work in Cloudflare using their wizard. Pulls up all the all the data and uh, converts it to Party. use uh, Cloudflare, and then you just uh, go to your domain registrar and say, "Don't use my host DNS. Use Cloudflare." That's it. Uh, what most uh, CDNs are like that. There are some CDNs that will only host uh, static media. They will not act as a proxy to your server, and they require a plugin in Joomla. In these cases, uh, migrating your content to a CDN is as simple as installing and configuring a plugin. And I know that Regular Labs is uh, publishing 
such a plugin for a CDN that was formerly called Max CDN. And I can't remember exactly what they are called right now, but they, they, they do exactly that. So it's not hard. If it, if it was hard, nobody would be doing it and they would be out of business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That makes sense. All right. Uh, well, that uh, is all the time we have for today. So thanks again, Nicholas, so much for the very informative presentation. And Nicholas and everyone uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun and stay safe, guys.